Indiana University, it is a new adventure for the campus population to be aroused enough to send off the football team. But all things change in time, and when the Hoosiers packed their pads and bust off to the airport yesterday, there was music and cheers in the aftermath of the buses rolling along the highway. There were some roses suggestions of purpose along the way to East Lansing. Coaches want to call such things distractions, but the football team is part of the university, and it has earned the doubtful privilege of distraction by winning its way to a conference championship game. Michigan State Spartans have had the same distractions, hype, media, questions, questions. The players love it. The coaches hate it. They grumble. The Spartans at home spend the night before the game at the Kellogg Center. They walk together on game day to the stadium. However reclusive, you cannot shut out the echoes. Today's game can send us to the Rose Bowl. Today's game is for the Big Ten Championship. Today's game won't make us or break us as men, but it will provide us and thousands more with a lasting memory. ABC Sports presents College Football. From the Big Ten, the game that could determine the Big Ten title, the Indiana Hoosiers, founding to their best season in two decades, led by quarterback Dave Framey to wide receiver Ernie Jones. The Hoosier defense, led by one of the country's top outside linebackers, Van Waiters, he can dominate a game. Michigan State quarterback Bobby McAllister, closing the season strong, will lead the Spartans today. The game prize, a little nugget, called the Rose Bowl. As ABC Sports presents college football. Michigan State University today concludes its first ever season sellout. Capacity crowds at Spartan Stadium for six home games. Today it's a fitting capper. The Indiana Hoosiers are here and the Rose Bowl ticket will go to Michigan State if the Spartans can win. As you look at the top of the Big Ten standings, if Indiana wins today, the Hoosiers still have to beat Purdue next Saturday to lock in the Rose Bowl. And if Indiana wins today, Iowa playing at Ohio State will stay in the hunt with a win. Hello again, everybody. Let's lock in one other fact to add to the dimension of this season. This is the first time ever that Indiana and Michigan State have both beaten Michigan and Ohio State both in the same season. So we are in, I think, for a treat this afternoon. What about the coaches? What do they think? Where do the coaches think this game will swing? I definitely feel it'll be one up front. It's going to be who can control who up front uh, on both sides of the ball. That's always it, isn't it? Yeah, that's the way I always look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it swings in a couple areas. Definitely in the trenches with the offense and defensive line. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a street fight out there. And it's going to Get involved like all big games in turnovers. And here come the Hoosiers. Seven and two. Some 2,500 faithful in the corner of the stadium yelling their lungs out. Indiana five and one in the conference. Losing only at Iowa. Coach Bill Mallory. Fourth year. Proving once more that he is a master at rebuilding university football programs. And right behind the Hoosiers come the Spartans. 6-2-1 overall, 5-0-1 in the Big Ten. Coach George Perlis, fifth year. He, too, has turned a football program around. heard what 
what the coaches say. Now our analyst, Bob Greasy. What say thee? <laughs> it's great to be here. It's excitement. It's uh, the way it should be. There's an old saying that offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. And if that be the case, this being a championship game, I would think that Michigan State has the inside track. They're the number three defense in the country, number one against the rush. And let's look at the defenses and see how they compare. You can see that Michigan State is very aggressive. Interceptions, quarterback sacks, tackles for loss. They're at the top of the Big Ten standings. Indiana State, Indiana, on the other hand, is last in each category. That tells you that Indiana has not, does not have a very aggressive type of defense. They're very laid back. Uh, Coach Mallory has told us that they are not a very uh, talented group. They have one fine player in Van Waiters. Michigan State, on the other hand, is a very aggressive. They'll attack you. They make big plays. The key, as I see it, uh, Keith, for Indiana is Dave Cramey, their quarterback, subbing for Dave Schnell, who had an emergency appendectomy last week. He has got to play well. I don't think Indiana is going to be able to run. He has got to be able to throw the football. On the other side, Michigan State has to run. Bobby McAllister, their quarterback, is not the type of uh, thrower that can carry an offensive team, so he needs to run. I think it will be an interesting ball game. Incidentally, for those of you who remember the old no-repeat rule, go back into the 60s for that one when the great Michigan State team of 66 undefeated stayed home. The Purdue Boilermakers with this man at quarterback went off to Pasadena to the Rose Bowl. Oh, they won, too. Kind of like that rule. 14-13, <laughs> they won over USC. This series, well, Michigan State has a big edge. It started back in 1922. A young man done in by a twist of fate. A young man who helped the Indiana Hoosiers get to this point of the season. Won't play today. His name, Dave Schnell, starting quarterback. Here he is now with Mike Adamley. Keith Wright, you are. You know, if it wasn't for bad luck, Dave would have no luck at all when it comes to playing Michigan State. Last year, separated shoulder knocked you out of most of that game, too. Yeah, you know, I've had a run of bad luck when I come up here and play Michigan State. This year, an appendicitis. Last year, a, a, a bad shoulder in the first series of the game. Uh, starting to wonder if I don't have a, a you know a little curse on me or something David I know the Hoosiers aren't worried though because they have a great deal of faith in Dave Cramey yeah you know the team Dave gets in there and leads the team real well they have a lot of confidence in him the coaches have a lot of confidence in him. he's a he's an excellent passer he did a fine job last week against Illinois and, and uh, leading them back uh, to win hurts a little bit to be in civilian clothes doesn't it yeah it does it's kind of disappointing okay Thank stay you. cool All right. Keith Indiana Michigan State it's gonna be a great one should be the capacity crowd comes to their feet. The teams deploy for the kickoff. The Spartans will kick it away. John Langlow will hit it. And going deep to receive for the white-shirted Indiana Hoosiers, we expect three people, Ken Allen, Ernie Jones, and Spud Washington. Bill Mallory is a coach who tries very hard to prepare his team in such a way that it won't beat itself. That's why he's got all these people back there to handle the kickoff. Don't let the ball go bouncing around at the end of a kick. And he's got three people, all flyers, back there. Probably three of the fastest men on the team waiting for the kickoff. They play it on the artificial surface at Spartan Stadium. Beautiful day for the game, and here we go. It's a high-hanging short kick at the seven-yard line to Ken Allen. Fumbles the football. Just when I get through saying he teaches them not to <laughs> hurt themselves, the ball comes squirting loose. But you're going to see some mistakes probably early on because you know the adrenaline valves are wide open. There was a lot of excitement. These teams have been looking forward to this game the entire week. Right there you see the ball come out, and luckily for Indiana, it goes out of bounds before anyone can gain possession. And the Hoosiers now will come up for the first snap of the ball game, having possessed it at their own 26-yard line. It is a team that has been a little slow to get going. First quarter has not been terribly productive for them all season, but they've been gangbusters thereafter. And they start with a run. Up the middle goes Anthony Thomas Thompson, and Thompson is belted down, hit right at the line of scrimmage. The lineup, it's Simons, Radke, Finnish, Schrader, Moore, and Jordan along the front for the Hoosiers. White people are Allen and Jones with Dave Craney at quarterback, Colts the fullback, and Thompson is the tailback. And there's very little gain on the first carry. Thompson had over 100 yards a year ago here in this stadium against Michigan State 
running the ball. There are those who doubt today if he can do that against the stunt 4-3. They bounce this one outside the tackle. And it's Thompson carrying again. And the Michigan State defensive people swarm in. Szymanski, Nichols, Davis, and Buddy, the down four, may play a stunt 4-3 with more snow. Larson, the linebacker, snow in the middle, the most active. The defensive secondary, Reed and Barnett on the corners, Miller and Crum, the safeties. And the last time we were here, Miller had four interceptions. The ball is resting near the 27. It'll be third down and eight. And Tony Buford and Ernie Jones are the two white people for Indiana. Could be Craney's first pass of the day. It is. Has time, pass away, pass is good to the tight end, Tim Jordan, who has been coming on very well in the late going of the season. And he picks up a first down for the Hoosiers out near the 39. It's a big completion for Cramey, a senior who has played a lot for the Hoosiers. In fact, their sixth all-time passer. So he's been in the ball game a few times. Makes a nice completion. The two wide receivers took off from the left side. They drug the tight end over to that side. Nobody there. He picked up the first down. Paulus Marte is in at tight end right now, replacing Jordan. They go wide to the field side, and uh, well, Jordan stayed in. They got double tied in. Give it to Thompson, and Thompson will have a yard or so as he disappears under a pile of green just about the line of scrimmage. Percy Snow, the middle linebacker, gets a lot of calls in a football game because he's the loose cannon back there. That's not 4 3. The big guys up front take down the offensive lineman and that frees number 48. And he is not a big man as you see right there. 6'3 and 211. He is a middle linebacker. The He'll reason, put a knob on you though. The reason he can play that position because all the stunning up front doesn't allow any of the offensive linemen to get to him. Ramey is back to throw. Ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage. The pass was intended for Thompson coming out of the backfield. And one of the big linemen looked like Davis, maybe. Travis Davis reached up and got a hand on it. There he is, number 75. Cramey stands 6'1", 210. So he's a little more than average height. The thing that Indiana loses with Cramey rather than Schnell is some mobility. Cramey does not move around as well. Schnell had the uh, ability, if the play was, was busted or somebody was in the pocket, he could scramble, make a positive big play maybe, out of maybe a, perhaps a sack. From the 41, it is third and eight. Spartans jumping around. Pretty good protection again for Cramey. Drills the receiver, Tony Buford, the senior from Aurora, Illinois, has an Indiana first down at the Michigan State 46-yard line, and they've been this kind of a team all year. It's third and eight. They convert it. Third and eight. They convert it. Well-designed play here. Buford, the outside of the two wide receivers, is just going to come across the field, similar to what Jordan ran on the first third down situation. So two third downs, two big plays for Indiana, and George Perlis has got to be concerned that they're passing uh, so well against this uh, Spartan defense. They have not been able to penetrate and put pressure on Cramey yet. He had one pass battered aside by a lineman. That's Jordan in motion on first down from the Spartan 46. Outside it goes to Thompson. He turns the corner, and he's got eight or nine yards before he's run out by Percy Snow and the free safety Todd Crum. Thompson, six-footer, 205, a sophomore only from Terre Haute. Last year, uh, Keith, right here on this field, Thompson ran for over 100 yards on Michigan State. That tough uh, run defense. And talking with the Indiana coaches, their philosophy was, hey, we're not coming in here left-handed. We're going to go with what we do best. And they were going to talk about running right at Michigan State. They did that on their first uh, couple of runs. It didn't work. And that time, they got some yardage going wide. Second down and one for Indiana. Fullback hey! hey! has it this time. And Tom Holtz, the senior from Henry Mancini's hometown, Aliquanta, PA is going to have the first down. You know, Keith, we talk about the stunt 4-3. Watch these two defensive linemen. 
Davis will cross this way. Nichols will come behind, and the runner will go right into where he was. It messes up the blocking, and right there, Nichols, number 83, makes the hit, but a first down for Indiana. It's very tough to block down, those Indiana. defensive linemen when they're stunning right and left. You don't know which way they're going. 32. Ball is at the 32 of Michigan State. So the Hoosiers put on a drive in the opening possession of the ball game. This is pitch low back to Anthony Thompson. I think they got away with a clip maybe down there because somebody took number six, Derek Reed, down from behind. Percy Snow came across to get the tackle and take him out of bounds. So there's... Uh, no gain on the play. In fact, uh, it appears from here he may have lost a half a yard. He mentioned it a little bit earlier, Keith, that Indiana, a notorious, notoriously slow starting team, seems to have gotten their engine started a little bit in the locker room because they got a nice drive going here. Be a big boost for uh, Bill Mallory if they could get a score on the board first. Ball is back near the 33 now on second down and a little more than 10. Brady on a roll, whips it to the sideline, pass into the hands of Ernie Jones, but this is a man that doesn't drop many. Ernie, look, you look at him, see? He's looking right back into a very bright sun, and I doubt very much if he ever saw the ball. Well, the sun is shining. You can tell from the shadows, the field is mostly in shade at that end, but watch here on the replay. You see him looking right back into the sun. He doesn't drop many balls. He, although he did drop a few fumbles, a few balls after he had them last week. As you look at the shadows, in about uh, 20, 25 minutes, the field will be in complete shade. On third down, the Hoosiers are two for two. They're third and ten now. They've converted twice at third and eight. And Cramey back. Still no pressure on him. His pass is away. And he doesn't hook up with Jones. Jones was deeper downfield. And Cramey threw the ball on a short up and out. And it goes incomplete. And there's the final as Michigan came from behind to beat Illinois 17 to 14. So Indiana now comes up to fourth down. And Pete Stojanovic, the place kicker, has brought the tee out to put it down at the Michigan State 39. So he's looking at a 49-yard try. He's one out of six between 40 and 49 on the season. One for one, however, past the 50-yard line. Plenty of leg. Got it. From 49 yards, the Indiana Hoosiers take the lead with 11.05 to play in the first quarter. State is yet to handle the ball. Last week, Michigan State tailbacks Blake Ezor and Lorenzo White both rushed for over 100 yards, the first time two Spartans have done that in the same game since 1976. Just moments ago, Washington and UCLA. After a Washington fumble on the first possession of the game, UCLA took it to the line of scrimmage for their first attempt in the game. And Eric Ball ran it 22 yards for a touchdown. It's 7-0 UCLA on their first play of the game. They're looking towards the Rose. And here at East Lansing, the Indiana Hoosiers take the opening kickoff, run off 12 plays, and cash in a 49-yard field goal from Pete Stojanovic and take the lead 3-0. And now Michigan State will see the football for the first time as Pete will kick it off. The deep people are Craig Johnson, 28, Blake Ezor, 26. Both burners. about the 13 and comes back across the 25 near the 28 yard line Michigan State opens with a big man Mandarich, Kula, Sherma, Tata, Hool, Sargent up front the wide people for Michigan State Risen and Boyer 
McAllister at quarterback, Moore the fullback, and Lorenzo White the tailback. And they will begin from, let's call it, their 27. Boyer wide to the bottom, Ryzen split to the top. Indiana shows blitz and they're coming. The handoff goes to the up man, and it's a good thing. Uh, well, it's White who slipped by the fullback to take it, but it's a good thing because that number, what was it? Was it Waiters that came flying? No, it was Hickerson, cornerback. Hickerson. Hickerson. Yeah. Harris, Sams, and Bauer are the up front people. Three down with Waiters and Huff outside, Bates and Bush inside at linebacking. Hickerson, the man who just blitz in one corner, Ziegler the other corner, and the safeties are Hall and DeWitts. This is White again, and Lorenzo steps through the hole and takes it out near the 34. Joe Huff, a senior from Newburgh, Indiana, got the first hit on him. One of the things that Michigan State will try to do is run away from Van Waiters, who is an outside linebacker, was an all-Big Ten player last year. They want to go two tight ends and run at Huff. Huff was only, is only 6'1 and 225, and when he came to Indiana four years ago, he only weighed 200 pounds as a walk-off. They want to try and run at him with a tight end. You got a double tight end alignment. They go back to Lorenzo White, picks his way through the crowd and breaks it for the first down, and here's our first penalty flag of the ball game. I think you got a holding call coming up against Michigan State. Tom Quinn is the referee. Here's Waiters. Now take a look at him. 86 is Kasevich, the backup tight end. Waiters is the one man that they have to take care of. As you see, he gets tripped up and blocked pretty well. Last year, uh, Perlis was telling us that the one man that caused them not to do well on the ground was uh, Van Waiters. He always goes to the wide side of the formation, the wide side of the field. The referee Tom Quinn there, the umpires Bob Pickens, Jim Mullendore, the headlinesman, Ed Marisich, line judge. Uh, field judge is Michael Sheehan. Ken Baker, the side judge. Mike Nevin is the back judge. We are holding on the offense. Holding. Repeat third down. So that wipes out the first down and a good run by Lorenzo White and Bobby McAllister now looking for the play to come in from the sideline. Now he's got it. Well, Keith, I think we saw the holding it's going to be right here on uh, Van Waiters by Kasevich. Grabs a hold of his jersey, holds on to him, and then just shoves him, which is legal. The shove is legal, the hold is not. Double wide, bottom of the picture, three wide outs. McAllister gives it to White. White cuts it up the middle. And Michigan State will punt it. They tried to spread out the Indiana defense, but a typical Mallory team, the Hoosier State at home, did not give up the lanes, and they get White short of any sizable gain. Crowd's a little anxious here. There were a couple of boos in there yeah, on third down and right. running. I think George Perlis just wants to ease into this game, not, not do anything that's going to give Indiana any more momentum than they might have at this point. And you can see by those numbers, he has an outstanding punter. That can be a weapon for you, a big weapon. And Montgomery has been there. The Hoosiers come up. There are 10 people up there. They're going after him. He knocks it out of there, and it's a beauty. And it runs Tony Buford all the way back inside the 15. And he comes back to about the 22. Good coverage by the Spartans. This is what I mean about a punter being a weapon. That is a 57-yard punt. And Carlos Jenkins downfield in a hurry to bring Buford down. This is Jim Hill in New York. Oklahoma leads Missouri 17-3 in the third quarter. Lionel Carr's replacement, Rodney Anderson, has fumbled twice. However, Jamel Holloway's replacement, backup quarterback Charles Thompson, has scored on a 14-yard touchdown run, and he has also rushed for over 70 yards. Oklahoma leading Missouri 17-3 in the third quarter. Now back to Keith Jackson. All right, Jim, thank you. And here, the field is now almost covered by shadow. As Indiana comes in for its second possession of the ball game, leading three to nothing with eight minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first quarter. The football is at the Hoosier 22. On 
Andre Powell is the fullback. Anthony Thomas, Thompson, I want to call him Thomas for some reason. Thompson is the tailback, and Thompson has the ball bouncing outside with it. He's shirt tailed by Percy Snow. Snow stepped through the middle, and with good speed, ran him down. Snow leads the team in tackles, and as we showed you on that graphic in our opening, the tackles for loss in the Big Ten. Michigan State is third coming in. They lead the, lead the Big Ten in sacks. They are very aggressive. That time, Indiana trying to run around in and not successful. George Furless told us yesterday that he thought Indiana would have to bounce outside if they were to gain a whole lot of yards on the ground. And they have started doing it already. That's almost motion. I think it is motion because the penalty flag comes flying out of the linesman's pocket as Andre Powell carries and Percy Snow gets another tackle. Got to set a second. Procedure call against the Hoosiers. Little mistakes. Well, both of these teams, Keith, have been penalized a great deal this season. Take a look at the, the motion. He turns forward a little bit too soon. Now, if he would have went there and set for a second, it would have been we legal. Illegal motion against the offense. We will repeat second down. So that backs him up five. The ball coming back to the 18-yard line. Just to finish they need my, 14. Finish my point about these two teams and their mistakes. Uh, Penalty-wise, Michigan State is the most penalized team in the Big Ten. Not surprising when you have an aggressive no. style of defense. Right. Indiana, however, is the uh, second from the bottom, or second from the most penalized team in the Big Ten. So their, their defense, although it's a conservative one, also gets penalized a lot. Students of Michigan State on that corner over there, and they're making a lot of noise as that pass thrown low ricochets off the shoulder pad of one of the linemen. I guess it might have been Davis again. Travis waving at it. He knocked one aside early on. And so now the Hoosiers look at third down and 14. When you come into a big ball game like this, it is not an unwise thing to do to be a little deliberate in the early going. There's no question about that. <laughs> wound up. <laughs> and, it's, and, and Indiana has done that. They have thrown shorter passes, which have been successful. Michigan State uh, declined to throw on third and long, and they were backed up in their own territory. Buford and Jones, the wideouts. They're coming to the same side as Jones comes in motion and Cramey back to throw. Pressure's on, pass away, incomplete. It was Jordan, the tight end, crossing the intended receiver, but Travis Davis had broken loose, and it was right in the face of Cramey when he threw the ball. Travis Davis has had an outstanding year. He had five sacks against Ohio State, which was a big, uh, which was a Michigan State record. He has 10 for the year, which leads the Big Ten. And he is the beneficiary of the double teaming that his uh, defensive tackle next to him is getting. Mark Nichols is getting so much respect that they double team him. That leaves Travis Davis one on one. Dan Straczynski in the punt. Gets it out of there with no pressure. Todd Crum backs up into the bright sun, takes it at the 41. Good return for Crum as he crosses midfield. And on its second possession, the Michigan State Spartans have it on the Indiana side of midfield at the 48-yard line. That was a 41-yard punt. So remember, Montgomery hit a 57-yarder in his first punt at 16 yards plus, and the defense stopped them there. Death Valley is full of life this evening as Clemson, ranked nine in the country, comes back and they defeat Maryland 45 to 16. Terry Allen scored two touchdowns and uh, Rodney Williams also threw two touchdown passes. And that means that Clemson wins the ACC for the second consecutive year. Now back to Keith Jackson. So the Tigers. So tough in Death Valley. Now Michigan State with the ball. Second possession. They're warmed up. Good field position. They may open the throttle a little bit here. Andre Risen, Willie Boyer, the wide people that is Risen in motion, brings him to the, the same side as Boyer, and here's McAllister's 
pulling the pass down and deciding to run it. Turns it upfield, and he's brought down by Van Waiters, and here's Mike Adam Lee. Well, Keith, in addition for the Rose Bowl berth being on the line in the Big Ten Championship, Michigan State and Indiana are also playing for something else that a lot of people don't know about. You've heard about the little brown jug between Michigan and Minnesota, the old oaken bucket between uh, Indiana and Purdue next week. Well, Michigan State and Indiana for, since 1950 have been playing for the old brass spittoon. And after this play, we'll, we'll talk to you about that in a second. McAllister looks, can't find anybody, and takes off. He's a good runner, and he's down to the 41-yard line. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, to continue with that story, I talked to a lot of people. They didn't know that this thing existed, but it has since 1950. Last year, as a matter of fact, Indiana won the old brass platoon 17-14 after the game. Word has it that one of the things that Coach Bill Mallory said was, hey, where's that platoon? Well, Michigan State couldn't find it. They later had to send it to uh, Indiana, and today Bill Mallory brought it back, and he'll be giving it back to Michigan State if Indiana loses. Some interesting Big Ten lore, Keith. <laughs> Where'd it come from? Out I of bet, the railroad I bet, I bet not one of these players is worried about that spittoon <laughs> today. That's right. They it's full of roses. They don't chew. Third down, two. Or thereabouts. As McAllister again wants to throw it. Again, can't find anybody. And the ball squirts loose. But I think they're calling him down. And they are calling him down. He'll be down around the 42-yard line. But what that's going to do is bring up fourth down. And it's going to bring Montgomery in to punt. The defensive coordinator for the Hoosiers, Joe Novak, was more concerned with McAllister's running than he was with his throwing. He says, I hope he throws the ball. We want him to throw it. The ball came out right there, but it was after he was down. He is more dangerous to Indiana as a runner than he is a thrower. Montgomery's in to punt now. He wants to hit a little knuckleball and hang it up there a while. Buford is deep, standing back at his 10. He gets it high. Buford comes up and wisely calls fair catch. And Montgomery didn't quite get what he wanted. Uh, the ball got up. It was a, stood on its tail and just laid there. And they wound up with these field positions out of it, actually, at their own 18-yard line. They're at home, so uh, Tony Mandridge, a big offensive tackle for George Perlis, comes out of Canada. He's a skater. 6'5", six, six, 300. <laughs> yeah, they, ought let, they ought to let him warm up at least. Uh, just they, warm up with the hockey team. That scared the other folks half to death. Just see that big elephant out there on skate. Framey rolls out. Sideline pattern incomplete. As intended for Ernie Jones. Ernie has had one hit him in the hand, but he was looking right into the bright sun. Don't think he ever saw the ball and didn't hold on. Otherwise, he hasn't really had a chance to catch one. Well, Indiana did the right thing this time, Keith. They threw away from the sun. They threw to the wide side, which was left, which is in the shade. And like we said, it's tough for a receiver to look back in that sun. They threw to the right side of the screen now as you're looking, and that's the side they should be throwing to. Second down and 10 now. Kramy is 2 of 8 for only uh, 24 yards. He's missed on his last five. Got Jones in motion, going back toward the ball. Pressure on, Kramy down, inside the five. Mark Nichols and Jim Szymanski. Szymanski at the end, and Nichols the tackle on the same side. Take a look at it from the offensive side, a play-action fake. Kramy cannot see the rush coming at him. Nichols, 83. Gets there first. Shemansky, 91, helps out. But the sack goes to Nichols. This offensive line has been very good all year protecting the quarterback. But they have not faced the number one sack team in the Big Ten, Michigan State. And it brings up third and 24 for Indiana. You may very well see him run the football right here. Holtz and Thompson out of the eye behind Creamy. Oh, he's going to put it up out of the end zone for Jordan, the tight end. Drilled him, too. Beautiful pass by Craney, but it is well short of the first down. He got the ball out to the 24-yard line, but he had to get it to the 29. I can't tell you how good a pass this is. He rose, so he has good vision. Maybe you can see there he is right there. 
He throws it behind one defender, the linebacker. An outstanding throw and catch by Jordan. Tells you a little bit about Mallory and what he thinks about Cramey, his backup, quote, unquote, quarterback. They let him throw out of his own end zone this early in the game. Hoosiers leading three to nothing. We'll have to punt the ball now. Straczynski's first kick was for 41. Take this one just a bit, but it's a tail dragger and takes an Indiana roll. Except Crum won't let it roll. He comes right to it and grabs it. And that's good thinking on Todd Crum's part. Because if he doesn't come up and catch that ball on the first bounce, it's probably still rolling. Winds up a 33-yard punt. Why the devil had it for you next week? Two games that are loaded with tradition and pride and bragging rights and all that kind of stuff. We open it with Michigan and Ohio State at Ann Arbor and come right back after that game with USC UCLA at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The USC UCLA game will be a Rose Bowl decider out west. Here's Lorenzo White straight ahead. I say it'll be a decider, but USC has got to handle a tough Arizona Wildcat team today. And UCLA was leading Washington in the Rose Bowl at Pasadena, their home field, 13 nothing a little bit ago. UCLA has not beaten Washington in the last four years. And they're liable to today. Oh, the Bruins still don't have Gaston Green. Brian Brown banged up. They lost Melvin Jackson, an outside linebacker. So their injury is depleting their powerful roster somewhat. This is Lorenzo White. First down, Michigan State at the Indiana 31. Brian DeWitt saved the touchdown. Watch the blocking now. As Shermer right here in front is going to get a nice block. These two men will work well over here. And the uh, and uh, White takes a straight handoff and a huge hole for Lorenzo. You give him that much daylight and he will put a hole in. He'll put six points on the board. That's what he'll do. Bounces outside. He has that wonderful ability to read so quickly and those great feet, quick feet. He just bounces until he finds the crack. The thing that scares you about Lorenzo White is his ability to cut back. And what that does to the defense is it doesn't allow the defense to flow as quickly. When he's running left, the right side linebackers can't flow as quickly because he may cut back. And that gives him the outside if he can get there because the pursuit won't be as great. Spartans have run it nine times. They've shown pass three times, but those pass plays shown have resulted in runs. And White, look at that. Now, number 45, Eric Hickerson, was left grasping clean, clear autumn air. I mean, it looked like he had every chance in the world to nail him behind the line of scrimmage, and whew, White was gone. Well, not only was Hickerson fooled, but he is the quarterback. Now, what they're doing is Indiana is putting their corner in their strong safety in running situations to stop the run. Not against the pass, they're doing it to stop the run. White now, seven carries and 47 yards. It's second down and six. Lorenzo's got it again, cuts it back. And a penalty flag. Came from the pocket of the referee, Tom Quinn. Tackle by Sam, 91, Jim Sam. Second holding call of the ball game against Michigan State. Holding on the offense, repeat second down. keep your hands inside the frame. Well, he did that all right, except he had a handful of cloth. Holly McAllister looking to the sideline for the play. Early in the season, he was wearing a wristband to help him with the calls. Sometimes they would just flash a number that responded, corresponded to the uh, wristband, and he would look there for the play. Second down, about 13. White. There he goes. First and goal at the three.
Dutch Mandarich, number 79. He's 300 pounds. He comes and gets one of the linebackers. The tight end goes up inside. Lorenzo White likes to run against Indiana. 286 yards two years ago. First and goal from the three. White up the middle to about the two. Lorenzo White has carried the ball on every play in this possession. In the game now with 10 carries, he has 70 yards. And George Perlis is letting him carry it like John McKay said years ago. Ain't heavy. <laughs> you don't belong to no union. <laughs> Second and goal. White going outside. Good pursuit by number 42, Andre Hall, the strong safety. And real estate gets tough down there because those safeties and corners all get right up along the line of scrimmage. So the first quarter is over. 3-0 Indiana, Michigan State threatening. 10 is not without some other exciting games today. And a wild one, Iowa leading Ohio State 22-21. About five minutes left. It's been back and forth with those two teams all afternoon. And Michigan, on a touchdown with 43 seconds left, defeats Illinois 17-14. The Illini almost had a great Big Ten season. Let's go back to Keith. All right, Al, here, Indiana leads 3-0 as we start the second quarter of play. But Michigan State knocking on the door. Third down, the ball is resting just inside the five. It'll be officially the four-yard line where this play will come from. Hoosier to Bo Durnett since uh, Michigan State had a first and goal at the three. It's White. Position of real estate, and Lorenzo White has just earned his full commission. Certainly has. Well, we said in the opening, as you take a look at Lorenzo, that Michigan State had to be able to run. That McAllister can throw the ball, but he needs the running game to be able to throw it. On the other side, we said that Indiana is going to have to be able to pass because we don't think they're going to run that much. And I think that's uh, so far is, is held true. Indiana. Getting a field goal on their first drive. Game going pretty much true to form so far as the shade now has completely uh, covered the football field. And that's uh, for the offensive backs and receivers and the defensive backs. I'm sure they're happy about that. If Michigan State wins the game, they win the ticket to the Rose Bowl. If Indiana should win the game, they will have to beat Purdue next week to lock the Rose Bowl. And neither of these teams have been to the Rose Bowl in over 20 years. Well, I guess for Indiana, it's been just at 20. And Michigan State, what, 22, I believe it is. Jones, Allen, Washington are the deep people. Jones may be the more dangerous. Langlow's kickoff. Got it up very high. Goes to Allen. And old Jones to have it. Allen wraps his arms around it and comes back to the 20-yard line where Dixon Edwards takes him down. 
Well, they go to the Rocky Mountain country for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. There's a penalty flag on the field as the Chicago Bears and the Denver Broncos will butt heads. And it'll be a good ball game. The Bears have been pulling them out, pulling them out, and pulling them out. Clipping call against Indiana. Should be a dandy of a ball game Monday night, Keith, with Chicago going to uh, Denver. It could be a uh, preview of the Super Bowl. Both teams certainly are well stocked with talent. Broncos have been damaged some, though, by loss of running backs. They've had uh, their fair share of injuries so far this season. But Elway's healthy. First quarter numbers are these. You see there the rushing yardage only three for Indiana that's not a surprise when you play Michigan State the 70 rushing yards and no passing yards for Michigan State I, I really believe that 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 kind of trend is going to continue the rest of the game all right the clipping call puts the ball back inside just inside the 10 Powell is the fullback. Thompson is the tailback. Framey the quarterback. This is Thompson. Can't get around the corner. It was John Miller and Mark Nichols that did the job. Miller came to the outside, forced him to turn it back inside, and when he turned inside, there was big Mark Nichols. And here is Nichols here, Keith. Now the guard is here, and he's going to pull. When the guard pulls, Nichols just follows him, saying, hey, if you're going out there, something tells me the ball eventually will be there as you see him shed the block of the fullback and gets over and makes the tackle. An outstanding player. Perlis was saying yesterday he's got all the moves. Loss on the play of about three yards. Call it second down and 13. Cramey want to throw it out of his end zone. Gets it away too high and incomplete. It was intended for Powell coming out of the backfield, but in fact, Miller had the better chance to catch the ball, and there is another penalty flag. Holding Indiana. It's a time, as Frank Royals used to say, it's a time for poise, poise, poise on Indiana's part here. Oklahoma State opening it up. And uh, so is Tennessee, for that matter. The ball is now back at the seven-yard line of Indiana. On that last play, I was sort of reminded of the older Walter Kemp uh, comment from that book that I was toting around for a while, <laughs> where it says the idea is, well, the opening of the hole is to... Uh, not let the enemy in, but keep the sortie going out. <laughs> Didn't work. And before it closes. That's right. Franey again. Throws it out of the end zone. Deep downfield, and it is incomplete intended for Ernie Jones. Covered by Derek Reed, who came to Michigan State from Southern Methodist. are going to have to pump the ball out of the end zone and the Spartans should have it in pretty good field position with sure-handed Tom Crum back there to handle the punt from Dan Straczynski. The key thing for Indiana to realize is not to panic. This is a tough right. defense they're playing against. It's going to be a low-scoring game where you have plenty of opportunities to move the football. Spartans loaded up front. All ten of them up there. Straczynski gets a good high-hanging kick out of the end zone. Runs from back to the 45, but he's got some room to run with it and returns the ball inside the 45 down to the Indiana 44. That's a 48-yard punt out of the end zone, a 12-yard return to tackle by Derek Daniel. And I think we've got another flag by laying back down around the 10-yard line. Let's we'll see what Tom Quinn has to say about it. Oh, 
Well, it's holding against Michigan State. Well, it's not surprising that we're having so many penalties here early in the game. Both of these teams, as I mentioned, very uh, highly penalized up until this point. You look at the field position for both. Before this penalty, Michigan State was going to get the ball for the second time in Hoosier territory. And, of course, the penalty will back them up some. But there's no question that they're getting the better end of the field position. We have holding by the receiving team. It's a post scrimmage kick spot foul. It'll be enforced at the end of the kick where the kick ended. So that's a big penalty because they had the ball down at the Indiana 44. The uh, ball was accepted back at the, about the 45. It looks like a 20 yard penalty to it's me. It's a 20 yard penalty. Well, it's, <laughs> in, it's enforced at the point where the kick ended. You mean where he was tackled? No, no, no. Where, where he it, caught it. Where he caught it. That's what they did. So it's first down at the 36. Mike Dush, you could have driven the laundry truck and uh, three automobiles through that one as he crosses the midfield strike to the 49 of Indiana. Well, they're running to their left again behind Kula and Mandarich. And when you've got something going, you keep going until they stop it. A huge hole as DeWitt, number 13, who played quarterback last year for Indiana, in fact, started six games, now has to step up and see Lorenzo Wright coming at him. Looked like a blur, didn't it? Got it again. And we'll pick up two yards on that carry as Darren Bush, the junior from Massillon, Ohio, brings him down. Well, Ohio State and Iowa having a fair to Midland war. If Indiana wins, I'll repeat it. Iowa stays alive in the Big Ten chase. Iowa loses, of course, they're out of it. Regardless. Just short at the 46. Second down and seven. Oh, Mandrich. Tony lost the count. Moved too soon. Can you picture him on ice skates? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see it. 6'5 and uh, 300 pounds. It, you would think he would look like a Zamboni. <laughs> Bottom left. There he goes. Just moving a little bit too soon. And you can't hide when 300 pounds moves early. He's a big, good-looking youngster from Oakville, Ontario, but went to high school in Ohio. Stayed with his brother, who was going to school at Kent State. That's where he got his grooming for his career in college football in the United States. Second and 12 from the Michigan State. 49. Well, let's call it second and 12 now from the Spartan 49. White has carried the ball on 10 straight plays and make it 11. There he goes outside. Van Waiters missed him. And He's close to a first down before Willie Bates gets him. Take a look at Waiters, number 48 in white jersey. He gets blocked, keeps his outside position. Two men blocking, both the fullback and the tight end. And then White just takes off around him. Great speed to get around him. That is Waiters' fault. That's his responsibility. Contain, turn everything back to the inside. That's why they put him to the wide side of the field. And last year, he was very successful in stopping just that type of run. With 12.34 to play in the first half, Lorenzo White's carried 15 times, and he's over 100 yards. He's got 102 plus this. Boy, he is, he is wound up today, isn't he? All the way down to the 21-yard line. Mandridge, number 79, and Sargent, number 49, blocking straight out. Mandridge right there, blowing his man off the line of scrimmage. If you're wondering why Lorenzo White is doing so well, part of the reason is Mandridge. They're running behind him most of the time. He's now got 121 yards. And it's first down, Michigan State at the Hoosier 21. This time, the fullback gets the ball, and James Moore, a sophomore from Lansing, will pick up a couple of yards to about the 19. That's just window dressing. Let the fullback carry it. <laughs> Let him carry it now and then. 
give White a rest. You know, and it was a play that White didn't have to do anything either, Keith. Just stand in the eye formation and not do anything. We'll give it straight ahead to the fullback. You get a blow, and we'll give it to you this time. Spartans have run it 20 times. They get to throw it. White. This time, it's Darren Bush, the inside backer, who had a crack and came flying through, and he nailed it. Back outside the 22. Well, they're trying to change up. Here's Bush here. These two men are going to go to the inside, and Bush will come around to the outside to make the play. They're going straight blocking. See how it fouls up the blocking? The right tackle, Houle, couldn't get through to get on uh, Bush. That time he scraped around the outside and made the play. Michigan State here gets a little mixed up in its substitutions. And rather than uh, make a mess of things, Andre Risen called a timeout. Students in South Bend want to go to Florida, throwing oranges on the field. However, reportedly, Notre Dame is going to the Cotton Bowl. Right now, they're on their way to their eighth victory of the season. They lead Alabama 20-6 to at halftime. Quarterback Terry Rice has thrown one touchdown pass. He has run for another. That touchdown pass, two yards to Andy Heck. Now, let's go back to Keith Jackson. And here, Michigan State leads Indiana 7-3. to And if the Spartans can win this ball game, they can lock a bowl rip to the west to Pasadena. It is third down and 12 now for Michigan State. You might see the first pass right here. Down the middle in the end zone, rising touchdown. McAllister's first pass, first completion, big one. He had five touchdowns coming into the day. He was the seventh-ranked quarterback in the Big Ten. He doesn't throw that often, but when you run as well as Michigan State, it sets up a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations. Risen, as I mentioned, made the All-Big Ten team last year. The receiver opposite him was Mark Ingram. He was the first-round draft choice for the New, uh, New York Giants. They both came from the same high school and both played quarterback. 22-yard strike, 14-3. to three. Michigan State, 10.55 to go. First half, Indiana now. They'll try to generate some offense. And Risen's on the kickoff team. Because I can do a lot of things for us. Jones and Washington will go deep now for Indiana. Keith, if the people are wondering about this game, this is nothing new for Indiana. No, of their seven wins this year, they've come from behind in the second half to win five of them. For some reason, they're a slow starter, but hang on. 
the fireworks will be in the second half for Indiana. Langlow's kick, a high hanger, short, 16-yard line, dropped, fumbled, and recovered at the 20 by Ken Allen. Right now, the Hoosiers are sputtering. They were down 16-0 uh, to Ohio State, came storming back to win a ball game. No sun to shine in his eyes here. Allen just a little bit too anxious. Their field position hasn't been anything to write home about. 26, 22, 18, 10, and 19. And now they're going to start this time uh, just short of the 20. Absolutely terrible field position, partly due because of the fact that Montgomery, Michigan State's punter, and you don't want to have to go the entire length of the field against the number three defense in the country. It does seem to get a little tiresome, doesn't it? <laughs> Back goes Kramer to throw. Third time in the ball game, it's been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Third time. He's got to loop that ball a little more. That's also the third time that big Travis Davis has reached up and slapped it down. Well, when you talk about quick release, quick release, you can tell when you keep getting balls knocked down. It's from the time you make up your mind to show pass till the ball is gone. Right there, you see Davis, a blur. That's probably been the first time Davis has ever been called a blur. <laughs> 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 it is. It is yeah. <laughs> Gets his hand up and knocks it down. 255 pounder. Second down and 10. This time it's Thompson. Picks up a load at around the 23 yard line. Load in the main. Travis Davis followed by Derek Reed. Framey now is 3 of 12 for 44 yards. He had four starts last year and one in 1985. As I mentioned, he is their sixth all-time passer, so with the absence of Dave Snell, who had the appendectomy last week, they still have a good quarterback to go to. Third and a long six. Shoots it down the middle to Buford. Bends on the mark. Where did he spot it? At the 30, it's a first down hoots on it. Tony Buford, 165 pounder, took a pretty good wallop, but he had tucked it away. Todd Crum, 35. Look at him right here. He looks to the left side all the way. He sees Buford coming in, and he's right there to make the hit. Crum was an outstanding player, also a baseball player, had an opportunity to sign with the Mets, but he said, I want to come back for my senior year. He leads the Big 10 and interceptions with seven. So it's first down Hoosiers at the 30. Pullback. And pretty good lab drive for Tom Polks, 220 pounder. And he moves the ball out close to the 35 yard line. Still close. I was going back to the lead. Boy, they've had quite a war in that one. And look at this. Washington has bounced back the lead. UCLA, 14 to 13. Notre Dame, as Jim Hill told you a little while ago, beating up on Alabama at halftime. I thought Alabama's speed might be a factor in that one. But Irish getting momentum every week. This is both the fullback. About the line of scrimmage. Very slow play developing. And Michigan State just swarmed it. At 840 to go in the first half. Nichols and Larson made the tackle. I might tell you that economically speaking, green and white bread sales at an all-time high this week. And so are roses around the the Lansing, East Lansing area. Well, it's not hard to tell. The left side of your picture there, you can see some red in the end zone, the corner of the end zone. That's where the Indiana faithful are located. The rest of the stadium is spotted with white and green. Only got 2,500 tickets. Hold them all in a hurry. Framie's pass drilled to his tight end, Jordan, and he picks up a first down on the catch. So, Tim Jordan, the junior from Westchester, Ohio, keeps the Hoosiers moving. He's made three catches for 39 yards. 
Framey turns and look to his, looks to his right initially, which is a help, and throws to his tight end crossing. That was his first completion of the day. Jordan came into this game with 25 receptions and has become more and more of a target as the season has progressed for the Hoosiers. First down at their own 43 with Michigan State leading 14 to 3 in the second quarter. And Kramer stays in the air. Goes down as Mark Nichols comes firing in, the ball rolling around. And Michigan State comes out of there with it. Nichols knocks it loose. Watch Nichols to the right side of your screen, fighting off the block of Schrader, gets around and makes the hit. We told you that Michigan State is an aggressive big play defense. Here again, they knock the ball free and give good field position to their offense. Kurt Larson, linebacker, recovered it. Spartans first down, Indiana 44. Lorenzo White to the 40. There's the redhead, Dave Creamy. Having a hard time so far against the Spartan defense. One thing that Mallory has done for this Indiana ball club is, is hard work. They have a positive attitude. They stay together as a team. They realize they're not the greatest talent in the world, especially on defense. But they get it done. They believe in each other and great leadership. Second down six. White again. Behind the line of scrimmage. Number 54, Doug Schlerich. Junior from Biddy Ford, Maine. He's one of the three or four Hoosiers who like to go to the weight room at 5 a.m. in the morning. No, thank you. <laughs> but this is one of the things that IU has to do with their defensive line. They have to slant it one way or the other. Michigan State's offensive line is too big to stay there and let you come out and block you straight on. They've got to mix it up, slant one way or the other, so you don't have those huge gaping holes for those linebackers to have to step up and fill. Third and eight. McAllister shows pass and put it up. Rising. One-handed grab. You talk about big players making big plays in big games. Lorenzo White has already rushed for over 125 yards. Their other big player is this man right here. Watch this catch. That's a one-handed catch all the way. Tell you, it's, it's nice to see players rise to the occasion. And I'm not pulling for Michigan State. I'm just saying that Michigan State's making some plays. Outstanding catch. Joe Ziegler, number 16 is injured on the field off the field actually on the sidelines just now beginning to come around and you've got timeout. There's Joe Ziegler he's up and about. Looks like it might be uh, somewhere in that knee or ankle somewhere in that vicinity but obviously in some pain. A sophomore from Miami. All right, it's Michigan State's ball first down at the Indiana 23. Mike Dumas, a freshman, goes into the ball game for Indiana at that quarterback position. And he's a true freshman, Keith, and he's covering Ryzen. Lorenzo White from the 23 to about the 19, four yards on the carry. And watch the work of Mr. Mandarich, 79. Second man to the inside with a green jersey right there. Blocking on the big linebacker, Waiters. Waiters does a little ole at the end. Mandridge was saying this week that last year's game, Waiters got the best of it. Perlis was saying yesterday that this kid is a mean kid, and he says he's looking to get even. Here's the pitch back to White. Can't bounce this one outside. There's a penalty flag down. Number 42, Andre Hall, a strong safety, had penetrated and ran him back into Waiters. It's interesting, uh, 
as we get the penalty call indicated, I think, against uh, Michigan State, that in the opening game of the season, they put Mandarich over on Marcus Cut and handled him pretty well. And now here against another outside linebacker of outstanding quality, they put Big Mandarich on him. We have a hurdling foul. Okay. George a little upset over the call. George is a defensive lineman by trade. Gets a little hot under the collar now and then, which defensive linemen have to do. Here's Waiters, 48. Let's see if it was holding. No, it was not there. Take a look at Mandarich, 79. See if he was holding. Yeah, right there. His arm, his left arm was outstretched across. I don't know, though. When the defensive man turns and doesn't present the front of his body to you, and you turn, the, defense, the offensive man has a right to have his arm slip around the side. From the 37. After the penalty. They've got to go to the 13. Though they need 24, and McAllister back. He gave up on the pass. He only had uh, two men deep, one man short. James Moore, he couldn't see Moore. And he finally pulled it back down, and they deck him back around the 41-yard line. Iowa has defeated Ohio State 29-27. That's the final score. So the Hawkeyes survive a narrow one and against the Buckeyes. They're still in the, the hunt for a, for a very nice bowl trip. Oh, yeah. And they can possibly still be in the hunt for the Rose Bowl if things work out. Now let's call it third and 29 after that last loss. McAllister gave up pretty quick on his pass routes. Nobody coming back toward him. Probably made the better decision. Bobby back to throw again. This time he throws it over to Lorenzo White, who makes a one-handed grab and turns in a big play down to about the 30. But that'll be fourth down and probably laying low into the game. At four minutes to go in the first half. Nice call here, Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator. Third and real long. Don't do anything stupid. A screen pass. Let's throw a screen pass. Let our halfback, our All-American halfback, make a great catch and get some yardage and move us into field goal range and we'll send out our kicker. Good call. So the ball is just short of the 30. The tee is put down at the 37. So it'll be a 47-yard try. Go hit the bar. Bounce over. Now 17 to 3. Spartan. These kickers help each other out. That's Montgomery 23 with the good hands and a perfect hold. They got their lucky green shirts on today. kick off for Michigan State. Let's see if he kicks to Allen again. He's kicked it right at him three straight times so far in the ball game, and now they reverse it. They put Jones over there, and Jones, there's <laughs> Ernie's got it. And looks for an opening and comes up across the 25 to the 26. Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, all week long we've read stories about how things are kind of dead in Bloomington. Not too many people are, are psyched up about their uh, great football team. And that's the reason why that is, is because they're all here in East Lansing. Silence! 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 
They're down, they're down 17 to three, but they're still enthusiastic. Clem Harrison, her son, uh, number 92, Nolan Harrison, playing a good game. Basketball isn't the only sport in Indiana, is it? No, football is. <laughs> football is the best. Okay, it's been exciting so far this year, hasn't it? Oh, yes, so far. And we're going to go all the way to the bowl. Okay. Get some points on the board. Framey, no. Intended for Kenny Allen. So it looks like now that uh, Bill Mallory has decided that he's not going to be able to run the ball much. So he's committing himself to the pass. Well, we said at the top that the, the, the balance of this game rode on the shoulders of Cramey. We didn't think that they would be able to get a running game going. The thing they need to do is be able to get the ball to Ernie Jones a little bit more. He came in having caught 54 passes and 12 touchdowns. In fact, he's got a TD pass in eight of their nine games. He is their big play receiver. Very good after he catches the ball. This is Thompson. And Anthony struggles out to about 30 in the arms of Larson and Snow. And you're now at three minutes to go, and that's what we'll have for you at halftime. Potential halftime report being a rundown of all of that which has been happening around the country. Third and six for the Hoosiers. Great throw, great catch, Jones. Ernie Jones is still going inside the 35-yard line. Wow, great play, Ernie. And a heck of a pass by Creamy. 37-yard pickup on the play. Well, Michigan State, now that they shut down the run, is going to try and shut down Ernie Jones. Watch the two men right here. They'll double him in and out. He's just going to go down and break between them. It's an outstanding throw. The man over him jumps to the outside. The other man is inside. Cramey just throws it right between them. Crumb, 35, as surprised as he can be. And a nice uh, run by Jones. Cramey takes a pretty good lick, too, after he released the ball. So the Hoosiers now with a little something at hand. Inside the 35, run a reverse. This is Ernie Jones. Got some daylight up the middle and knocked off balance. And down by Kurt Larson, number three. Larson may have saved a big play right there. You got to give credit to Nick Saban, the defensive coordinator, for really structuring this defense. Whoever is responsible for the reverse is always there, and Larson was there that time. It's another effort by Indiana to get the ball in the hands of Ernie Jones so he can use some of his running ability to make the big play. Second down and 12, a loss of two. Rob Turner is in at flanker right now for Indiana. The Hoosiers with 96 yards passing, eight yards running. Framey has some time, goes big with it. And it is intercepted in the end zone, intended for Allen. And coming down with it, Todd Crumb. frustration man wasn't open here's the receiver here he's going to go straight down crumb is here the defensive back on this side will be there also and he's not open at all to the to the far right of your screen watch Cramey. i mean crumb jumps and takes the ball away Cramey made a very poor decision to throw it sometimes when things aren't going right you do these things out of frustration Crumb leads the Big Ten in reception in interceptions. He now has eight. 115 to go in the first half. This ABC Sports Exclusive brought to you by New York Life to help you get the most out of life. And by Michelob Light. When the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. Todd Crumb was a corner last year. 
and they didn't feel like he had enough speed on the corner, and he switched to safety, lost some weight, picked up a couple of tenths in the 40-yard dash, and is doing very well. First down at the 20, and carrying is Lorenzo White for three yards, and he's now got 123 yards on 22 carries. Well, he came to defend the week. Now he is the hunted Sable tonight on ABC. Then somebody's trying to rip off a half million bucks. Bad idea when O'Hara's in your ballpark. Pat Morita, the star, followed by Hotel tonight on ABC. Second down, seven for the Spartans. They lead 17-3. And Lorenzo White working hard today and having a big day. Eric Hickerson. That tackle for Indiana. I don't believe that George Perlis' game plan, Bob, was to uh, let White do that much work. But when you're hot, you're hot, right? 23 to 5. They're going to let the clock run down. First half is over. And the Michigan State Spartans lead the Indiana Hoosiers 17 to 3 at halftime. If the Spartans win the game, the Rose Bowl trip belongs to them. We are now ready for the second half at Spartan Stadium and this ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Honda who invites you to experience the all new CRX SI at your local Honda dealer and by Domino's Pizza because Domino Pizza delivers. A look at the statistics at halftime. Look at the bottom. The time of possession is pretty much even 31 plays for Michigan State and 30 for IU. The two turnovers were big. Also the rushing yardage for Indiana. Only eight yards rushing. They've got a throw to win. Michigan State, 130 yards rushing. Individually, the offensive leaders, McAllister for Michigan State has hit on all three and a touchdown. White has been the offense. Ryzen has caught two and one touchdown. The leading tacklers, the middle linebacker, no surprise there. Percy Snow. And for IU, Cramey has got to play better the second half, 6 of 17. Thompson will probably be used as a receiver out of the backfield. Jordan, the leading receiver, tied in. And DeWitts, the free safety, is the leading tackle. And it's time to go with the second half as the Hoosiers will kick off. Michigan State, at the outset, had won the toss and elected to defer accepting the second half kickoff so the Spartans will have that first possession. Leading 17 to 3. Stojanovic, feet ready. Nails it. I drifter, Ezor, 3. 20. Six runs him down. Eric Coleman can run. Uh, no, Ezor can fly. And Coleman ran him down. 90 yard return. Perlis told him that Indiana is a second half ball club and this will do more than anything else to deflate their egos coming out here in the second half. That's his first appearance of the day in handling the ball and those that loud noise coming from the Ezar home in Las Vegas. Don't worry about it. It'll subside a little while. Handoff goes to Lorenzo White and White slams it inside the five. Oh, yeah, man. First 
Ball is just inside the two. Wright picked up about seven yards on that carry. There's Blake Ezor. He's only a sophomore. His father called George Perlis and said, I've got a son for you. I think he's pretty good. Perlis says, oh, no, not another father recommending a son. When Perlis found out that Penn State, Notre Dame, and Miami was after him, he was interested. Lorenzo White. No. Just about, but not quite. So it'll be third down and goal. Not only was Perlis interested in Blake Ezor, but when he found out he was a consensus parade All-American, he was very interested, and he said his father delivered it. He said Blake didn't want to go here, but his father, who had known Perlis from Pittsburgh, and when the Steeler coaches visited Las Vegas, delivered him to Michigan State because he says, I want my son playing for George Perlis. It is third and goal and a half a yard. Guess who's going to get it? Lorenzo fumble. Michigan State keeps it. Indiana man had it, but James rolled over the top of it, and James Moore recovered it. Number 33. I think Darren Bush was the Indiana man that stuck his head in there, number 40, and knocked that ball out. Well, this is a true test for the Indiana Hoosiers coming out the second half with the history that they've had. A big hit there. You just can't come up with a football. And that brings up fourth down, and in comes Langlow. That's a uh, that's test of their medal, isn't it? No question. Hickerson with the hit that caused the fumble. Langlow from 21 yards. Almost blocked. But it is good. Mike Dumas, the cornerback, had a shot at it. Just missed it. And so Michigan State settles for the field goal to lead 20 to 3. They had it first and goal on the 8th and couldn't stick it in the end zone. But they get 3. You've got 12.34 to go in the third quarter, and yes, roses are moving. Over Indiana's last five games, the Hoosiers have outscored their opponents 79 to 18 and have not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter. Well, they have still not allowed a touchdown in the third quarter, but Michigan State just dinged them for a field goal after that 90-yard kickoff return by Blake Ezor. The Spartans have run off 20 unanswered points to lead 20 to 3. So now let's see if the Hoosiers can pick themselves up after that gallant goal line stand. Back go the three men, Washington, Jones, and Allen. Last time they were back there, Jones was in the middle. Michigan State's Langlow kept kicking the ball away from him to Allen. And he and Allen reversed positions so that Ernie finally got a chance to return a kick. See if they do it this time. Nope. And Langlow hits it down the side, goes toward Washington. Spud's got it at the 12. Pops it up. Across the 30. Good return out to the 32. Take a look at the possessions. They started in their own territory, no better than their own 26. And keep in mind, they're going against the number three defense in the country. Their last two possessions were turnovers, a fumble and an interception. So this is their best starting point in the ball game at their own 33-yard line. Just getting underway here in the second half. It's been a second-half team, remember. Kramies coming out throwing underneath Thompson and the tailback will go down at about the 39 with a hit from Kurt Larson and just like Bob called it they start using Thompson as a short receiver well, he's caught 16 passes coming into the game and if they can't get him the ball by handing it to him to run they'll swing it out of the backfield and get him the ball in, uh, in broken in the field and see if he can make something happen that way. It's second down at about four.
Holtz as the fullback. That's Ernie Jones in motion. And the fullback, left side, big hole, big gain, and first down, Indiana, at the Michigan State 47-yard line. Tom Holtz. How do you figure a team that can come out like this in the second half and play so much better than they have in the first half? I knew I would bottle it and sell it. Watch here <laughs> as Post gets a good block on Snow. He's blocking up front. 64 is Radke. Nice block at the point of attack. Holes the fullback, doesn't carry the ball very often. I asked Mallory that same question. He said he doesn't know. He said they're just slow starters. On first down, Cramey to pass. Zips one, dropped by the tight end. Tim Jordan had the ball in his hands. It had a lot of zip on it. And it just spun out of his grasp. That's one he should have taken on the numbers. One thing I've noticed in this drive, similar to what they did last week against Illinois when they come out and after half when they were behind, they started with short passes to kind of try and get something going. The other thing that I noticed was their special teams made some big plays to help get them back in the ballgame. Second down and 10 from the Spartan 47. going outside and yeah, they just didn't much doing is there not against these flying defensive people I mean they really run to the ball crumb the free safety and snow the middle linebacker eight starters return from this Michigan State defense that uh, was one of the top defensive units in the Big Ten last year there is no substitute on either side of the ball for foot speed no doubt about that. UCLA has proven that and done it year after year. Third down and six. Kramy trying to throw for Ernie Jones and did not have enough on it. And the ball. Could have been picked off by Tim Moore, strong side backer. Travis Davis, 75, gets penetration into the pocket. You see him right there if you look closely. And he, as much as anyone else, was responsible for that poor throw. And so the punter, Straczynski, comes into the ball game. 41, 33, and 48 on his three previous punts. Todd Crum, deep for Michigan State. Hangs it up there. Crum lets it go and go and go into the end zone. So the Spartans will come back to the 20 first down after a 43-yard punt, leading 20 to 3 with 10-19 to go in the third quarter. All right, let's see what the Spartans can do with it. They had the ball first and goal on the Indiana eight-yard line after that long return of the kick by. Lake Ezor and couldn't stick it in the end zone. Now they start first down at their own 20. McAllister, Moore, and White behind the center, and this is White. And Lorenzo having a big, big day. Runs it out to the 26. And Jim Sams, the nose guard, makes the tackle for Indiana. He's the junior out of Union, Iowa. In the first half, Lorenzo White carried the ball 24 times what was involved involved in 24 of the 32 plays he also caught one pass carried it 23 times so he has been their offense here this afternoon second and four right again there's the first down as he crosses the 30 and he has now carried the ball 1,000 times in his career at Michigan State. 1,000 times. He had an injury last year. It was uh, an injury to his knee and his ankle. The knee got more publicity, but he said the ankle was the one that really kept him out of there. He's got big feet and big hands. In fact, he's only 5'11". Five, five 
but he wears 12 and a half double E shoes and has good vision. He can make those cutbacks pretty quick. It's pretty good foundation, isn't it? Good, solid foundation. Pullback. Jim Moore gets a rare call in this ball game. Again, it's a matter of letting White have a breather without taking him out of the ball game as much as anything. Andre Risen caught that 22-yard bullet down the middle for the touchdown, but has been relatively quiet today. Boyer has not seen the ball, mainly because the Spartans haven't had to throw it yet. Right now, Indiana's got to stop him. White's grinding away at him. And he's up to about the 40-yard line on that carry and will be a half yard short of the first down as Eric Hickerson and Willie Bates make the hit for Indiana. Next Saturday, Michigan, Ohio State at Ann Arbor. That starts our day. And following, USC, UCLA. All begins at 12 Eastern time. And UCLA has regained the lead over Washington, I understand, 1914. What about USC, Arizona? That figured to be another tough ball game for the Trojans. They get caught looking ahead a little bit. And those Wildcats will jump you. Here come the chains. They want to check it. It does not appear to be a first down. One can never tell from where one is sitting up here. It's not quite. Tom Quinn showing us it's the length of the ball short. Meantime, as Morris Watts talking to the quarterback McAllister and sends him out with a play. I'm reminded of the last third and short yardage situation they had when Indiana was up trying to stop the run they hit a touchdown pass over the top to Ryzen. this is always a tough decision for the man calling the plays because if you run it you're probably certainly going to continue with the ball the way Michigan State's been making first downs if you throw it you're likely to get a touchdown or if you miss it you got to punt the football away quarterback sneak Leading 20 to 3, stay conservative with it and pick up the first down. And UCLA has now jumped out to its 26 14 lead over the Washington Huskies. So from the 41 now, the Spartans will try to control the ball, eat up the clock. They have a 17-point lead. They get all the points they need. If they can keep Indiana away from the football. Lorenzo White trying to cut it back into the middle, runs into Walt Harris, and Harris handles him after a yard pickup. One of the, the, the good factors of the Michigan State offense is they have Ezor on the sideline and he's fresh legs so they may choose uh, before too much time goes by to give him some time and wipe some rest he is a fine player in fact uh, Mark Nichols was uh, saying to uh, Tim Moore the uh, two defensive players and you know it stinks we're not going to be around here next year they're going to be better than they, we are this year this is white going again Lorenzo up the sidelines and he stayed in back and he picks up a first down as Van Waiters finally got him. But he was right on the chalk and came tap dancing down the sidelines to pick up the first down. And they're running into the sideline, Keith. Everything is over here because of this man right here. The wide side is this way, but they're running away from him behind Mandridge, their big offensive tackle, and away from the man they feel like last year was the one player that stopped them right there. Van Waiters, 48. Both coaches agree that Indiana's defense is average talent except for Waiters, 48, and he is something special. So the ball is now at the Hoosier 48-yard line. First down, Spartan. And Risen goes in motion. 
And White's got the ball. And he's going to have close to five yards on that carry. He has been involved in 33 of the 42 Michigan State offensive plays. You know, it's really a credit to Bill Mallory how far he has brought this ball club. Oh, Last year, they were 6-6. Six and six. Doesn't have outstanding talent on the defense, especially. They play a type of defense where you count on your friends. You don't put anybody in you know, on an island where he has to make a great play. They play together as a unit. On second down, White gets it back. And the Hoosiers pounce on him at the 42. So they've got a long three yards coming up on third down. And Bauer. Notre Dame is pummeling Alabama in the fourth quarter. And Auburn leads Georgia by seven. And AM, Arkansas went into that game with a walk on third string quarterback, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do the job for him in the ball game that may swing the Southwest Conference Championship. This is McAllister going to run it. Gets his first down, and then some. One man. Finally got him down just short of the goal line. This is a quarterback sweep, a run the entire way. And I'm reminded what Perlis told us yesterday about Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator, teaching this man, McAllister, to run north and south, turn it up and take off. I'm sure Morris Watts would love to say he taught him how to make these moves. Poor tackling and just great running by Bobby McAllister. Well, he deserves to sneak it over now after a run like that, doesn't he? Certainly does. Let's see whose number he calls. His own. And he didn't get there. So Morris thinking the same thing we're thinking. He deserved the six after that run. As much as he deserves it, I hate to see quarterbacks jumping over that pile because they're the guys that have to make the decisions. They have to call the plays, decide where to throw the ball, and they're exposing their head to those linebackers when you dive over that pile. And how many times you see these linebackers coming in and pounding these quarterbacks on their head? Obviously, I was never one to sneak the ball very often. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to those big guys. They get paid for doing that. Second down and goal. Lorenzo White, touchdown. to go in the third quarter. Michigan State sticks it in the end zone and that breaks Indiana's defensive streak. Not allowing touchdown in the third quarter as Lorenzo White bangs it across. And the Spartans right now have things pretty well in hand. Some folks may be on the phone with the travel agent. They didn't have a bonfire and a pep rally last night. Everybody went to the hockey game, including the university president, John DiBiagio. But look out tonight, folks. <laughs> there may be some fires in town. <laughs> <laughs> They'll light up tonight around here because it's been so long. And I'm sure there's some depression now is starting to settle over the place of the Indiana Hoosiers, but it ain't over yet. That lady hadn't even started to hum yet. This is Ernie Jones looking for daylight. Pops it outside. 
Ryzen runs him down and drags him out. That, that right there is why Ryzen is on the kickoff coverage team. He is the safety in case the man breaks loose. He has the speed to catch up. Now here's Mike Adamley. Keith, I imagine all across America, former Spartan football players are enjoying every minute of this contest. Michigan State leads it 27-23. I'm with one of the great Spartan All-Americans, Lid Shadnoy. 27-2-3, I said up there. And you don't want to make uh, that a problem, though. No, no. Lynn Shadnoy, 1949. I know this morning they had a very, very, uh, very nice ceremony for Duffy Doherty, and a lot of the former players and coaches were there. Yes, they did, Mike. They, uh, a lot of the players came over from all parts of the country to pay their last respects to Duffy Doherty, who most of all players played for him or knew him, and we had a very nice turnout, and Francie, his wife, was there and his kids, and uh, it was a wonderful thing, thing to have. Speaking about wonderful things, the way uh, George Perlis has the Spartans playing in this pivotal game is really amazing. Well, you know, to me, Perlis has always been a defensive coach. It's fine. I think the offense has finally started clicking with some of these great runs that's been made by this white. You know, I don't think anybody else has carried the ball, but maybe once other than white. But uh, I think it's, we, we got him where we want him right now. Yeah. If they do it, going to the Rose Bowl? You better believe I am. <laughs> Chief? Yeah, Lynn will have fun. Take your sticks and away you go. There'll be a lot of folks searching up the old golf track. And you gotta be, you gotta know that Duffy is smiling, uh, looking down on this oh, one. Oh, you betcha. Second down and ten. Craney tries to option, has to keep it, turns it back into the middle, and runs into Tim Moore. And a lot of folks have stopped hard running into Tim Moore. Tim Moore is, excuse me, Keith, I'm just going to say, Tim Moore is a senior, one of the few graduating uh, seniors off of this uh, Michigan State uh, ball club, only 11 seniors on the entire squad, three on defense. The rest of them will be back. Moore is uh, playing the same position that uh, two pretty good linebackers that played at Michigan State went on the pros, both first-round draft choices, Carl Banks and Anthony Bell. Some say he may be in the first round also. It is third and nine. Craney gets it away. Buford knocked out of bounds by Todd Crum, but it is a big gain for the Indiana Hoosiers with no flags lingering behind them, and they walk toward the Michigan State goal line. Craney with just a half row. He got great vision. Nobody in front of him. Throws it over the linebacker, over the uh, back uh, Barnett, and Crum gets there to knock him out of bounds. And gives them a first down at the Spartan 26-yard line. They had a threat going in the closing moments of the first half, but a pass thrown loosely into the end zone was picked off by Crum in double coverage. Now Craney clearing 27 to 3. Trying to stick one in there now. Gonna throw it again. Good protection is pass underneath off the shoulder pad of Kenny Allen. You got to look at home. There's a penalty flag back up field and it could be one of two things, either holding or roughing. And it looks like face masks. And it's against Indiana. So an Indiana man apparently grabbed a face mask trying to defend his quarterback. Exactly. That usually happens in the offensive line. So the Hoosiers did again. UCLA now comfortably in front of Washington. Explosive football team. And that's final now as the Irish win a big one and that'll elevate their posture in the polls and Auburn between the hedges and Athens handling the Bulldogs after a rough tough game Florida State the people offense, 15 yard penalty, on ball. told me that uh, they thought they had left Auburn pretty sore after their win there's a halftime we told you Arizona was giving Southern California a bunch of trouble and it's not surprising so apparently Auburn uh, not as sore as people thought and uh, they lost a great defensive lineman in Tracy Rocker. Uh, Lanesmen are up there beating the dogs right now. Auburn has a lot of good defensive players on yeah, that unit. Sure do. Sure do. All right. It shows first down. But it's a half a mile. They've got to go. 
through the 16 to get the first down. Ball snapped at the 45. This is Ernie Jones coming across the middle and caught from behind by Derek Reed, a junior out of Dallas, Texas. Reed has been following Jones all day. Reed is their number one coverage guy. A lot of the big plays, 10 touchdown receptions, or 12 touchdowns that Jones has made this year have started inside, crossing routes, little drag patterns underneath, square ends a little bit deeper. And Reed knows that and has been following him most of the afternoon. The ball resting now at the 34. They need 18 yards on second down. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. Blaney has it picked off by Todd Crum, his second interception. He threw it down the middle. Crum fumbles the ball. Buford dives after it for Indiana. I'm still waiting to see who's got the ball here. It belongs to the Spartans. That is the ninth interception of the year for Crum. That is a new season record for Michigan State. Here's Crum right here. It's a very poor throw because Crum is just going to be back here playing deep center field. The ball is well overthrown. Three deep zone. Crum plays the field. Baseball player, that's nothing for him. He can handle that. Take a look at Crum just playing the field. He was one of the nominees at the beginning of the year for the Jim Thorpe Award going to the best defensive back of the year. I'd say he's got a pretty good chance with his ninth interception on the year. Percy Snow, the Spartan who covered the football. They're whooping it up in East Lansing, Michigan with a home team, the Spartans, owning the football first down at their own 14-yard line and leading Indiana 27-3. And if they hold on to the lead, headed for the Rose Bowl. Lorenzo White, in his last home game, having a big, super-duper day, runs for a first down, loses the football, but the ground can't cause a fumble, and Michigan State retains it. Lorenzo White, 35 carries, 182 yards, and two touchdowns so far. And a nice block by number 60, the center, Shermer, right there, running Sams, the defensive tackle, out of the play. White knows what he has to do when he gets past the line of scrimmage. You know, it's interesting that Michigan State offensive line who holds their opening today, straight blocking most of the time, just one-on-one, -on -one, making things happen. From the 31, White again on first down. Headed for 200 yards almost surely if he stays in into the fourth quarter. Indiana in the first quarter to a 3-0 lead. The Spartans came back on a four-yard run by White, 7-3. 22-yard pass to Ryzen, 14-3. Then Langlow, a field goal to make it 17-3 at halftime. Langlow, a 20-yard field goal to make it 20-3. And then White from a yard out to make it 27-3. And that's where we are right now. And the ball is at the 40-yard line, second down and a yard. Michigan State defense has just absolutely shut down Indiana's running game. The fullback, James Moore, gets a carry and looks like he will have a first down for Michigan State. And coming up Monday night on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the Chicago Bears go to the west to the Rocky Mountains against the Denver Broncos at 9 Eastern time. And I'll bet you one thing Mike Ditka and all of his folks are hoping for Please don't let it snow. <laughs> forecast is for snow tomorrow. I, I don't know why he wouldn't want snow. That weather that they get in Chicago off the lake there sometimes. There ain't no bargain, is it? <laughs> but you're up there a mile high, remember? In air. I love to watch games in snow. You know, as long as I'm sitting home watching. <laughs> yeah. In front of the fire. That's right. From the 42, it's the first down. The handoff goes to White. Picks his way and picks his way for about four yards before Todd Walker and Darren Bush can bring him down. Speculation continues. Iowa beat Ohio State today, 29 27, looking for a major bull bid. 
The loser of this game, which right now would seem likely to be Indiana. But we've still got a full quarter to play. Probably going to get a pretty good bowl bid. Holiday bowls here. The Rose Bowl, of course, certainly here because they uh, can literally shake hands with Michigan State if the Spartans win this ball game. This is White one more time. And Lorenzo crosses midfield to the Indiana 49. David Schnell, the quarterback for the Indiana Hoosiers, who went down a little over a week ago with an acute appendectomy here at the ball game. Hoosiers got into a bowl game. He will surely be able to play, though Dave Cramey did a fine job in pulling the game out last week. He's done a good job here today. This is an ovation for Lorenzo White. And company. Lorenzo walking around, holding up his hand. Last home game. And the home folks right now have it in hand. USC trails Arizona 7-6 at halftime. The Trojans need a victory or a tie in order to keep their hopes alive for the Rose Bowl. However, if UCLA defeats Washington and they lead 33-14 right now, the Bruins go to the Rose Bowl and the Trojans go home. Back to Keith Jackson. Spartan Stadium, East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State leading Indiana 27 to 3. Michigan State has the ball, third down and two at the Indiana 49. And Lorenzo White, one more time, slants over the right side this time. He's run most of the day over the left side. And he looks like he will have one more first down. And those are the numbers there through three quarters. Turnovers are a key. Three for Indiana. The lack of rushing yardage for Indiana, 32 yards. It tells a story, the rushing yardage for both teams. White now has 39 carries in the game for an even 200 yards. And you got to give some credit to that offensive line. I'm sure he'd be the first to mention they've opened huge holes today. On first down, White again. That's carry number 40. And had it not been for somebody getting a hold of his shirt tail he'd be in the end zone he takes it down near the 30 and that's another first down take a look from the end zone now look at a hole right up the middle he could have chose that one he says that's not big enough I got another one out here that's a little bigger Boy, it's nice when you can choose from an inside hole or an outside hole how many times do you try and run the football and there's nothing there Darren Bush was the man that had him with the coattail Spartans have a full head of steam right now as White dances around, comes back in the middle, fumbles the football. Indiana says, we've got it. Let me see what the man in the striped shirt says. He says, I think they do. But wait, one of them pointed the other way, and now Tom Quinn, the referee, does officially. And the Hoosiers come up with White's fumble. You've got 14 minutes, 11 seconds to play in the ball game. Sometimes when you start celebrating a little bit too soon, as we saw Lorenzo and the rest of the offense doing at the end of the third quarter, you lose some concentration. The ball comes out. Waiters 48 is right there and is going to jump on it. And it's a turnover, the first of the game for Indiana. And the Hoosiers go to work at their own 25. They're due for a bit of good luck. They haven't had any luck so far in this ball game. Framey gets his pass away, and it's intercepted. John Miller. That's a total of four interceptions, a fourth turnover, and three interceptions. 
two of them by Crum and now one by Miller. Penetration again up the middle. Travis Davis, 75, is not going to allow him to step up as Moore, 42, comes flying by. Miller, as we said, who had four interceptions against the University of Michigan, had five on the year. He, too, was a corner last year. Both safeties, Crum and Miller, were corners last year, moved to safety, both of them doing well. They have, let's see my math, they've got 14 interceptions between them, 15 interceptions between them this year. White carries 41st time, going to the outside and run down, and brought down by Andre Hall. That's his 42nd carry. That'll give him 227 yards. Ooh. Ball is at the Indiana 31-yard line. Well, we mentioned a little earlier he had 286 against Indiana two years ago. He's got 42 rushes. Unbelievable. This is McAllister, the quarterback. Cut down back at the 35. Mike Dumas. Made the hit on him. Must be something about looking at red and white that gets Lorenzo wound up. Well, you know, some players, uh, honestly, seriously, have favorite colors. Like, I hated to play against teams that wore black, like the Steelers. Whenever we played the Steelers, we always, I always played terribly. Or the Raiders. I think Lorenzo likes uh, red. Obviously, McAllister doesn't. Yeah, but you were playing the, uh, there's David Schnell, who's not too happy watching things. You were playing the Steelers and the Raiders when they were tough. Double tough, huh? Yeah, well, we <laughs> beat you up. That's for sure. It's third down now, and a little more than 10 as McAllister rolls it back. Throws it underneath. Oh, what a hit that was. What a hit on Gusevich. He may be out. The tight end. Oh, he's getting up. Well, he's counting his parts and pieces, I'll tell you. Ooh. I mean, that was a lick. I think he just asked Mandarich, which way's our huddle? crossing pattern and a nice hit by Hickerson well Hickerson is 215 and rich 245 but I think Hickerson got the better of that one right on the button Eric's all right Out there by himself, taking a little walk, though. McAllister in the ball game, four for four, 64 yards as the chains come out on the field. One pass for a touchdown, and he's picked up 39 yards rushing. And it's a first down for Michigan State at the 24-yard line of Indiana. 12 and a half minutes to go in the game. Joe Pugh is now the fullback. still in the ball game because George Perlis is not convinced that he's got this one locked up. Mandridge and Sargent. Mandridge taking care of his man. You know, this Indiana defense, Keith, is not that an old a group as we take a look at Mandridge, who's had an outstanding day. Only two seniors on the entire first team for Indiana. They'll have a lot of people returning again next year. To the right side. And penalty flag down as Lorenzo looks to be across on the mark to 14. If he is, it'll be another first down. Let's see about the flag. Holding. Michigan State. That'll wipe out the run. Take a look at Mandarich right here again. The man we've been talking about, almost 300 pounds. Watch as he pulls. Sergeant right next to him, the tight end will also pull and lead up through the hole. Great block by Mandridge. Up close and personal right here. I guess if you can ice skate, you can move around on an offensive line. <laughs> hey, there's something in the paper yesterday. They, they both were holding. <laughs> 
something to ask about Manners if he'd like to go out and warm up with the hockey team. He says, says well, he says, I don't know. I haven't skated for five years. I think I'd like to practice one, one week before I went out and did it. I still think they ought to let him just for the show of it. Second down and 12 after the penalty. Here's another penalty flag thrown by the referee Tom Quinn as McAllister breaks a big run inside the pen. But that I think is going to come back too. I think Lorenzo started a little too soon. Yep. Back it comes. So they've been dinged on successive penalties now. And as we usually do toward the tail end of the ball game, we pick an MVP from each team with Chevrolet donating $1,000 to the respective university scholarship funds in the name of that player. And I don't think there's a whole lot of mystery about who's <laughs> going to get it from we, Michigan State. We just happened to get a shot of him running off. <laughs> yeah. And he's come off the field. That means Blake Ezor has gone out there to get some playing time. So that motion penalty brings the ball back outside the 30. Michigan State, five yard penalty. Second and 16 from the 30. Take a look here, see if we can see the motion there. Lorenzo White was just going down, and the ball was snapped. You have to be set a full second. He's probably a little tired. That he is. So what, 44 carries? 45? Well, here's Blake Ezor. He doesn't have the shiftiness of Lorenzo White, but I'll tell you one thing about him. He does get to the hole in a hurry. I guarantee you one thing. Those Hoosiers on defense know what he can do. He is a real speedster. In fact, they've got some real speed in that uh, offensive team. Ezor runs the 40 and 4-4. Ryzen runs it in 4-4. And McAllister, the quarterback, runs it four five, as does. They just took him out. Lorenzo White. White comes back in. He's all last week at 151 yards. Third down. Well, Van Waiters finally gets out in the open field and nails Bobby McAllister. And there's a loss on that play back to the 30. And so it'll bring up fourth down. Waiters was the most valuable player on that Indiana team last year. He led him in sacks with 14. He only has four coming into the game today. He says it's been a frustrating season because everybody obviously is running away from you. When, when you're head and shoulders above anybody else on your defensive team, you're going to get some respect by teams running away from you. He uh, is also that defensive leader. He's the guy that fires him up and one of the outstanding players on that team. Mallory was saying he had some problems after his freshman season. He suspended him, got his attitude right, has come back and been nothing but one inspirational leader for this ball club. Well, there's a little confusion, and it finally results in a timeout call by Michigan State. All right. We have finally righted the confusion, whatever it was, and it had to do with the clock, but I don't know in particular what it was. And you see this uh, rather determined conversation going on between the referee Tom Quinn and George Perlis. It's 27 to 3. That's what was going on during the timeout. So now that whatever it is, they've satisfied it. McAllister, who had come off the field, is now going back on the field. And George I was indicating that he wanted him just to go ahead on fourth down and run the play. And uh, the 25-7, a uh, second clock never moved. And finally, the Michigan State players called the timeout, and I think George might have been arguing that uh, he didn't want that timeout. He shouldn't be charged with it, but he's cashed it. Well, it's 27 to 3. There's 9 minutes and 17 seconds to go. I don't think George Perlis is conceding anything yet. I think until that clock is under 5 minutes and he has that type of lead, is he going to call off the, uh, the first teamers and say, hey, we've won this ball game? All right, it's fourth down from the 30. They've got to go just inside the 14 to get the first down. So they need almost 17 yards. McAllister's pass is thrown underneath, and that won't do it. Joe Pugh, the fullback, over on the sideline making the catch. Indiana holds and will take over the football out around their own 27-yard line. 
This may have been the door slammer for Michigan State. Ezor returning the second half kickoff. He didn't score on the play. Michigan State only got three points out of it. But knowing the history of Indiana this year, how they've come from behind in the second half and won five of their seven victories, Indy, I mean, uh, yeah, Michigan State coming back, Indiana stopping him right there. I think that was the key play if you had to draw one play out of this ballgame. Even though they did not score a touchdown, they did get three and then later scored a touchdown in the third quarter. Right now, Dave Cramey, sideline, out of bounds, incomplete, no catch. Got to have one foot in, he didn't. He went up in the air and came down Tony Buford outside. UCLA now rolling it up on Washington, Oklahoma with a new quarterback and a new fullback having to struggle some today. Notre Dame won convincingly against Alabama. Alabama, a team that had upset LSU last week. I don't know if it's upset or not. Alabama has, I don't think they've ever lost down in Baton Rouge, and they didn't last week. Second down and 10. Ball to Hoosier. Thrown underneath to Anthony Thompson, the tailback. And Thompson is knocked down at the 29-yard line. There are other scores from around the country. As we look at the clock rolling, eight minutes and 45 seconds to play in this game. Oklahoma State's got to go to somebody's old game. Oh, they've had a heck of a season. Probably going to finish nine and two. Big win for North Carolina State. Boy, have they been up and down. Arizona leading by four over USC. That was the bear in the woodhouse right there for the Trojans. I knew they were going to be in for a battle. The week before they play UCLA. Deep drop on third down. Pass is caught by Thompson out of the backfield, but he's held by the Spartans. Percy Snow and Kurt Larson short of the first down marker. Now a decision for Bill Mallory. It's been a frustrating day for Mallory. He brought his team in here. He's done an outstanding job of bringing them to this point. Got to punt it. Mallory was voted Coach of the Year last year by the Big Ten coaches. Came through Miami of Ohio, played for Parsegian and John Pont. It's fourth and two. Do they snap it short? Nope. Don't gamble. Krasinski goes ahead and kicks the ball out of there, forcing Todd Crum into a fair catch call back at the 28-yard line. It was a 38-yard punt with good hang time and eight minutes to play in the football game. Not much. <laughs> Not a happy day for that young lady or anybody else of the 2,500 or so who made the trip up to East Lansing. But the future for Bill Mallory's football team is very bright. Wherever Bill Mallory has been, he's turned things the right way. Colorado, the first year he was five and six. Last year he won 70-70, uh, he won the uh, Big Eight. Bo Schembechler. Yeah. Schembechler is a big uh, supporter too, Keith. Yep. He's a big fan of Mallory's. In fact, two of his, uh, two of Mallory's sons have played for Schembechler. One is playing there now. Doug's a strong safety and captain, and the other Mike played for him is now with Bill as a graduate assistant at Indiana. Lorenzo White is still in the football game on first down carries for a pickup of about five, and here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith Jackson, Governor James Blanchard is supposed to be non-biased and root for the Michigan Wolverines as well as the Michigan State Spartans, but being a Michigan State graduate, I guess today we'll forgive you. <laughs> well, yeah, this is uh, the restoration of a great Spartan tradition. Every fan in the country is excited. It's been 21 years. George Perlis and those players have enormous character, and you can see the, you can feel it. Uh, this is uh, one of the more exciting moments uh, in all of Spartan sports history. And, and you and you were an undergrad in 1964, I guess, and sure. back when that tradition was just starting, the Duffy Doherty era. 
Right, right. And we were used to winning, and now it's been a long time. And the loyal fans deserve this. They deserve it. But the coach and the players, they've shown so much leadership. They've come from behind this season against Ohio State, Iowa. Uh, they've shown enormous character, and we're, th we're just thrilled. Okay, Governor, thanks for joining us. Keith, you want to know what kind of football fan he is? Every time he looks at the players over there, he's going, all right, all right, let's go. <laughs> Pasadena, all right. Well, I know everybody's talked a lot about Duffy, and bless him, uh, we loved him, and he was a great coach. But you know the guy that really got things started here was Biggie Munn. He was the big horse that started this wagon rolling and was here when Michigan State came into the Big Ten Conference. And up the middle for a first down goes Lorenzo White. My goodness, he's going for a half a hundred carries today. That's 47 carries, 246 yards. Take a look at his offensive line. 61, the right guard is Tata. Shermer is 60. As Shermer gets out and makes a nice block, Shermer's a graduate student. He's in his fifth year, and he is the boss, the center of that offensive line. He makes the calls, and well, he should. First down, 41 for the Spartans. at six minutes to play in the ball game. Here comes White again. That's 48 carries, and a gain of about eight. Now, the NCAA record for carries is Kent Kitzman of Minnesota. 1977 carried the ball 57 times against Illinois. I remember Bill Inyard, Earthquake Inyard out at Oregon State. He had 53 carries in a ball game that I remember I, he might have I thought he had 57 too but <laughs> for some guys that's a whole season yeah. career you're talking about Biggie Munn and Duffy Doherty you ask George Perlis who was the biggest influence on him the first man that comes the first word is Duffy the second is Chuck no the coach of the Steelers right again and he's held uh, right about the line of scrimmage. Well, Michigan State officially began participation at the Big Ten back in 1953. And they came right out of the blocks to win the championship under Biggie Munn. Beat UCLA in the Rose Bowl 28-20. That was his last season as the coach of the Spartans, too. In fact, the uh, ice arena here at Michigan State carries Biggie's name. It is third down and three for Michigan State at 4.45 to go in the ball game. White, he's got his first down, and he's running just as hard as he did in the first quarter. Speaking of changing times here at Michigan State, gentlemen, and I mean in the purest sense, this gentleman, Nick Vista, retiring after 33 years and the sports information department succeeding Fred Stapley Sr. as uh, director of sports information. There is a nicer fellow loose in the land than Nick Bristol. Going down to Atlanta. Forty two yard line first down. Right again. And about five more yards. Now you're inside four minutes. I do believe I would retire, Mr. White. He's now got 51 carries, 269 yards. And the last thing in the world you want to happen now is you know he's got to be getting a little weary. Well, you don't want him to get hurt. Fall down and break a hand, break a finger. The winners and the foot. losers, the Michigan State players celebrate. Mallory thinks about what I can learn from this game, what my players learn. It's interesting, they buried a lot of ghosts this year. They beat Ohio State for the first time in 23 years. They beat University of Michigan for the first time in 15 tries. Illinois had six wins against them in a row. They wiped all that out. Penalty flag following Lorenzo White there as he goes out of bounds down around the 30-yard line to have another first down, but flag might bring that one back. Yep. Holding. Well, it's the first time, too, you're talking about Bill Mallory in this season. It's the first time Indiana has ever beaten Michigan and Ohio State in the same season. There was one time back in 59, they beat Michigan, tied Ohio State, nothing, nothing. But this first time they have, uh, they have ever beaten them. 
And uh, that 1967 Rose Bowl team uh, with John Eisenberg and Harry Gonzo and that bunch, uh, they did not play Ohio State that year. So. 52 carries, 272 yards for White. 53 carries will be the MSU record. There he goes. 53rd carry. And he almost picked up a first down on that one. Step to the right, back to the left. Good runners get stronger the more they carry the football. I guess, Keith, I kind of bridged the gap for Michigan State going to the Rose Bowl. I was there in 1965 on the field playing against the Bubba Smiths and the George Websters when they won and went to the Rose Bowl, and I'm here in 1987. It's going to be hard-pressed to control this crowd as Bobby McAllister calls a timeout with a minute and 57 seconds to play in a game. That student body just aching to come on the field. What's going to happen tonight? Well, let the head man tell you, Coach George Perlis. But as far as uh, after the game, if we win, yeah, the odds are good that uh, there'll be a party. And uh, the odds are good that I won't miss it. <laughs> That's for uh, sure. Understated. <laughs> we play hard and we party hard. Lorenzo White, as a sophomore, ran for 286 yards against Indiana. He's got 283 right now. Is he still out there? Yes, he is. So he's apparently wants to break his individual record, and he's probably been lobbying with the coach to do it. Because I would surely have the feeling that uh, he might very well, uh, George, might have wanted to take him out some time ago. But sometimes uh, a player of that quality can be persuasive. I'm sure that the last thing that Pearl has told him was, don't take any chances. You can get the carries, but don't get hurt. You might be casting a couple of Heisman ballots, too. No question about that. Third and one. White again. Has the first down. Down at the 31-yard line. The MVPs in the ball game, one of them very obvious, Lorenzo White for Michigan State, and his name is Spartan Land. The original land-grant university will get $1,000 in their general scholarship fund in White's name from Chevrolet. Darren Bush with at least 15 tackles in the ball game. Inside linebacker for Indiana. Good day for Darren. And in his name, Indiana University will receive $1,000 from Chevrolet so that a deserving student can march along in their academic progress. Andre Rison has come out for the plaudits of the crowd and his teammates. White now with 54 carries, 285 yards. Out of the wishbone, White up the middle. And he has now surpassed that 286 mark. He's got 55 carries for 290 yards. And the ball is resting at the Indiana 24 and the clock rolling. The NCAA record for carries in a game, remember, 57. White has 55. So if you're that close, you might as well go on and get it. I'm always a little surprised that somebody down on the bench, though, would, uh, would know that. Yeah. Well, it's called down from Maybe upstairs, by the way. One of the coaches. McAllister is five out of five, completed all of his passes. We said coming in that they needed to run. They certainly have done that. White again. That goes in the books as a carry. And he just about got to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on it. So now he's going to give him two yards. So it's 56 carries and 292 yards. And McAllister's called a timeout with 24 seconds. 
And here come the students. And now they're going to let the clock run. That's it. Forget it. Forget it. There will be no more plays. He's going to be one carry short of the NCAA record. With that many people on the field, forget it. And here's Mike with George. Well, George had tried to call timeout with 23 seconds left to get Lorenzo the record. But first of all, your feelings. How does it feel after all these years, baby? Feels good. I'm just very happy. Feels good. You knew, you knew a long time ago that this was your dream to become the coach of the Michigan State Spartans. And now you've done it and taken it to the Rose Bowl. Thanks, Mike. I'm awful happy. All right, high five, high five. Enjoy it all. Enjoy it tonight and savor it. Okay. Keith, it's good. Well, this is the first time that George Perlis has been subjected to a delirious crowd. And he may, before this is done, find that scrimmaging with Mean Joe and that bunch in Pittsburgh was easier than this <laughs> because you can really get yourself pounded in a crowd like that. Well, he signed a contract five years ago. It was a five-year contract. He said he had a five-year plan. I don't think he really knew that at the end of five years that this stadium, the students and everybody would be on the field as they are and he'd be going to the Rose Bowl. But you got to give him credit. He did an outstanding job pulling this group together. And Bill Mallory and the Indiana Hoosiers have done a great job, and he has done an outstanding uh, things for them. They'll, They'll be back. heard of yep. again. They don't, neither one of these teams lose a lot. Your final score in the ball game: Michigan State 27, Indiana 3. Everybody was anticipating that UCLA and USC might be playing for the western end of that Rose Bowl situation, but right now the Trojans are trailing Arizona while UCLA is winning over Washington. Scores and highlights of today's top games and more. Now from New York, Al Troutwig and Jim Hill with College Football Scoreboard. Welcome to the college football scoreboard and many of the much anticipated games today, important games, blowouts were the order of the day. But I know of one tired young man who's going to be very happy tonight. Boy, you're not you kidding. better believe it. Yeah. Lorenzo White of uh, Michigan State. You just Michigan State defeated Indiana 27 to 3. So the Spartans go to the Rose Bowl. Fabulous day for Lorenzo White. 56 carries, 292 yards, and two touchdowns. One of the big plays in that game came in the second quarter for Michigan State. Bobby McAllister, fine quarterback, will throw a 22-yard touchdown pass to Andre Risen. That made it 14 to 3. They went on to win it and go to the Rose Bowl 27 to 3. One of the teams they may face there might be those UCLA Bruins. They defeated Washington this afternoon. 47 to 14. Big day for the Bruins. Now, Eric Ball came off the bench once again. He's filling in for Gaston Green. Ball scored two touchdowns this afternoon. One of 22 yards and one of 54 yards. Ball coming off the bench, as we mentioned. This is a 22-yarder. They go on to win at 47 to 14. Big game for the Bruins. Now, the USC Trojans really need a victory this afternoon in order to keep their Rose Bowl hopes alive. They trail Arizona in the fourth quarter right now. The score is 10 to 9. And if they tie, they also are out of the Rose Bowl picture. Well, Oklahoma, the number one team in the country, defeated Missouri this afternoon. The final score there is 17 to 13. Charles Thompson rushed for 97 yards and scored one touchdown for the Sooners. Barry Switzer was run over by Thompson on the sideline. Has a brace on his left knee we're told that he's okay yeah, they may go to the orange bowl one of the teams that they may, that they have to face in order to get to the orange bowl is nebraska now nebraska ranked second in the country is idle this evening and of course they have this week off and nebraska right now is an early two and a half point favorite over the sooners next week in order to win the big eight championship and tom osborne the coach of nebraska says really too much is being made out of their contest coming up next weekend well it seems like a lot of people look at it that way it's kind of unfortunate in that uh, you know, we've played UCLA uh, this year that I, I believe is one of the top four teams in the country. We played uh, South Carolina, that I, and I believe that's definitely one of the top ten. And I think Arizona State was very good. I think Oklahoma State is probably in the top 12 or 13 somewhere. And, uh, and yet, uh, many times all those things don't seem to matter, you know, when the Oklahoma game comes around. And, and uh, so it becomes kind of a one-game season. And... Uh, that's it's okay if you win it if you lose it that's not very good so uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the game and i think it does get a little bit out of proportion with uh, nebraska people 
and the winner of that game will probably play Miami, Jimmy Johnson's fine team. Miami plays Virginia Tech a little bit later on this evening. Well, another night game has Florida State going against Furman this evening. Now, reportedly, Florida State will go to the Fiesta Bowl, where they will play the loser of the Oklahoma-Nebraska matchup. Here's a final. Boston College jumped out to a 17-0 lead against Syracuse. However, the Orangemen came back and scored 45 straight points, and they go on to defeat uh, Boston College. The score there is 45-17. to What an absolutely magnificent day for Tommy Kane, their fine receiver. Kane caught a couple of...